Okay, so let's take a deeper look into how we use constraints. So I'm just gonna click on the top down view of my view cube, go on to create a sketch and select our bottom plane here. Uh, I'm just gonna draw a very random quick uh, sketch just so you can see, just so I can explain the subject a bit better. So I'm gonna push L on the keyboard to bring up my line tool. And I'm just gonna draw a random weird shape such as this, let's say something like that. So we've got a complete shape there. Um, and you can see it's already added two constraints in there already. Now, if we need to know what those constraints are, we can mouse over up here and we can see that these are perpendicular. That's what they are. So um, if we open up the constraints box, by the way, we can mouse over and see what each constraint does and what, it, and what it's for. And also the icon next to it here shows us the same icon that's on our sketch so we can identify it that way like we can see that one there is horizontal and vertical okay so let's add some constraints to this and see how it all works so I'm using my middle mouse button to bring that in to the middle um so let's go over them all so our vertical horizontal constraints if we got a constraint here if we got a feature here that we want horizontal but it's not quite we can just select this Select that feature and it locks it into the horizontal there. So if we open up our constraints view, we can see what else we have here. So I just wanna talk about the fix unfix one. So we can select this constraint, say on this point here. Now, whatever we do to the drawing, that won't move. That's gonna be fixed in place, it's locked in there. So if we push escape on the escape key to get out of any feature we're in, and you can see that by the uh, icon next to the arrow. So if we click on that constraint, you can see we've got a padlock next to the arrow, escape and does that. So with that in place, when we move things around, everything's gonna pivot off of that. And you can see this constraint here is keeping that perpendicular as well, because that is one of the constraints. And these two here, if we move around our, our origin here, it won't let us because it's very constrained up. But if we move this point here, we can only make that line shorter or longer because that's locked into a horizontal, same as this one with the vertical. So one of the constraints you'll find you'll use is the concentric restraints. So if I show you this quickly, I'm just gonna draw a quick circle and another circle here. Now what we can do with the concentric restraint is we can click on one and another feature and that pops it inside like that or it moves it, the second one to be concentric with the first. Now, um, I find this really useful for holes and radiuses. Say, for example, we had a feature with a hole in the middle of um, a spigot, for example, very quickly add this in place. Okay, so um, the other one I wanna talk about here is tangent. So if I just push out on the keyboard to, to draw a line that goes towards our circle there. Now, quite often we're gonna need to blend radiuses and flats into one. So for example, if we had a radius here, we would need to be blended between those two flats. So the way we do that is with the tangential constraints. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna click on our um, object uh, that we want to be tangential to the radius, then click on the radius. And there we go, it gives us a nice tangential blend there. And we've got that um, icon there, it shows us it's constrained. So now when we machine this, there's gonna be a nice blend from an arc to a straight line rather than a step. So the rest of our constraint box, we have perpendicular, which is great for right angles. For example, this is perpendicular here, so we can constrain that even higher. Yeah, it's saying it's over constrained because it already knows and these two lines are black, so it can't be any, so we can't add any more constraints to that. But if, say for example, these ones here, if we wanted this at 90 degrees, we would click these two and it locks it at 90 degrees and there's our 90 degree there. So, and because this is constrained up, it wouldn't do it here. Um, it had, the only way it could do it was down here. So the good thing about constraints is we can almost design our part without dimensions. Just by using constraints and lines, we can very quickly get our shape. And once we've got the shape that we wish to machine, then we can start adding dimensions to it and making it ready to be our finished product. So we use constraints quite a lot in Fusion. And as you're working with Fusion, you should always be thinking, could I use constraints for this feature and should I?